that is a doozy that class starts out with like 30 people and ends with like 18 because people drop out Sandy here welcome or welcome back to my channel today we're gonna to be talking about classes you take as a first year uh, interior design student so this is gonna be for those of you who are thinking about going to school for design or who are already in school for design and you are taking all your core classes like English and math and stuff and you haven't really entered the design class phase uh, so I'm gonna be talking about classes in terms of quarters because uh, my school does classes like three months at a time but if you're at a school where they're doing semesters at a time then you would want to just combine two of the quarters that I'm talking about into one semester to get an idea of what clown classes you'll be taking and I'm gonna go over the subject matter but your classes may have different names and stuff so for my first quarter at school I took um, uh, design fundamentals so that class I took it with some other classes that are design adjacent like art history and stuff but design fundamentals is a basic uh, art class that every single major is gonna take so not just interior design students um, but I'm at a specific art school so there's graphic design and video and audio and all that and in that class you're learning literally all the basics of design um, about the rule of thirds, um, how to position a subject in a, in a piece of art or on camera or anything like that um, a shading, which is called values, how light or, how light or dark something is, um, different mediums, if you're stippling something, hatching something, oh my god, you do not want to stipple like a whole piece of art, it will take you forever. Um, stippling is like using little dots and stuff uh, to make something look lighter or darker. Uh, and uh, it's it was a really great class because it gives you just like an overview of having an idea and then turning that idea into an object and then trying to understand how close that idea is to the object um, and vice versa and then what medium gets you the closest and, and just also knowing when to step back from something and be like, okay, this is it, it's done. So for my second quarter of classes, I took observational drawing, uh, intro to interior design and digital color theory. So digital color theory is uh, all digital. It's, you use a lot of Adobe um, Photoshop and Illustrator, and you're learning a lot about the color wheel. So you're learning about um, why the colors are in the order that they're in, um, why certain colors look good to each other, look good with each other. If it's complementary, tertiary, um, those all sound random terms, but I promise you'll learn them when uh, you're taking the color theory class. And it's, um, you're learning the software of uh, Photoshop and Illustrator 2, which is really good if you're going to be doing interior design for your career because you're going to need them for presentations and, and school projects and things like that. Uh, so it's definitely good to keep on top of that and um, just stay with it. Just It's a use it or lose it thing. I've had to like reteach myself Photoshop a million times. Uh, so don't be me. Stick with it. And so observational drawing is literally what it sounds like. You sit in class, he puts something in the, well my teacher was a he, he puts something in the center of the room and um, you observe it and then you draw. So it could be fruit, it could be a wine glass, it could be fabric, um, and it could be uh, little shapes or a chair and you're literally looking at um, how the light hits the object what's light, what's dark, what's the dimensions, what looks flat, what looks, you know, what doesn't look flat, and you're trying to draw it to that, um, to, as, to the best of your ability. I went to that class drawing stick figures, I'm still like not at the best, but I'm definitely a lot better at drawing than I was before. Intro to Interior Design was also another class I took, and that was my first like really design focused class, and I love that class. It's um, really introductory, like it says, it's an intro class. And it, you're learning about the history of interior design, what influences design, um, the different kinds of proximity of space that people like, and what is um, um, across different countries, like in different countries they have like different kinds of personal space. And um, what's trending, why it's trending, the uh, um, early designers, so Elsie DeWolf is one of the first interior designers. Um, you're learning about just design's influence in the world and, the, and, and vice versa. And your projects are going to be really, really rudimentary. So it's stuff like just doing little mood boards. We had to, for my project, we had to like pick a celebrity and design something for them and then you had to explain uh, why you picked that design and do your little fabric swatches and it was, it was really cute. I really enjoyed that class. 
So for my third quarter, I took um, architectural drafting, perspective drawing, and science of light. So architectural drafting, that is a doozy. That class starts out with like 30 people and ends with like 18 because people drop out. That makes you think, do, do I want to be a designer? Do I want to just decorate? It's very, very difficult um, because of how time consuming it is. And it's just all new. Nothing you've learned to that point really overlaps with that class. It's all new. And the way I like to think of it as, it's like learning a new language. Um, so when you say drafting, you're learning how to draw like blueprints and stuff. So if you've ever watched like an action movie and they're gonna do like a bank heist or something and they all roll out the plan and they're all like okay so the exit's over here and the vault's over here and we're gonna enter from here and here and da 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 so those drawings are blueprints and you're learning how to draw blueprints in the class and the reason I say it's like learning a language is because when you draw something you're telling the plumber, the electrician, the architect, the um, well or, or the architect could have drawn it um, the general contractor, uh, what it is that you want and how you want it. So you're measuring literally every little inch. So when you're, you're, when you're specifying a door, specifying as in I specifically want to use this door and you're telling people that, so you draw the door and you literally have to put how thick the molding is and how, how big the, you know, the door knob is and how big every panel is. It's very, very, very detailed, which is why it's so time consuming. My final project in that class, what well, took me 50 plus hours to do, we drew a beach house and I think it was one floor <laughs> and I'm probably faster now that I'm not a first year student anymore, but it still was just crazy time consuming and just super intimidating. So I, so a lot of people realize, hey, maybe I don't want to be an interior designer because up until that class, people think interior design is just decorating and then you take that class and you're like, oh no, this is for real this is not decorating and it makes people just kind of wake up uh, so that class is very very difficult <laughs> and next class I took was science of light and science of light is literally what it sounds like you're learning about just light in depth from um, UVB rays UVA rays what the Sun gives us how our eyes perceive light you're literally learning about all the different parts of the eyes and what they do and how they process light um, why we see certain colors um, longer than we see other colors I think red has the longest wavelength and blue has the shortest wavelength um, correct me down below in the comments if I'm wrong <laughs> uh, and it was very very technical and a little challenging but I, in general it's it's a good background knowledge to have and a lot of majors take that so it's not interior design specific um, if you, photography you're gonna want to know you know how light works and how our eyes perceive light um, so that's gonna be really helpful for you as well and the last class I took that quarter was perspective drawing and that um, is drawing interior spaces so by for the word perspective it just means like where you are in the room um, so if you're looking into a corner and you can see two walls like one this is one wall the second wall So that's a two-point perspective if you're looking straight at one wall That's a one-point perspective and you're learning how to make things look 3d on a 2d surface. So just paper and pen So for my fourth quarter, I took a lighting design sketching and ideation and um, textiles and materials so textiles and materials, actually, uh, I think our school actually used to do it with the fashion students because, uh, you know, um, materials are materials. You could use denim to make a jacket or you could put it on a sofa and have a denim sofa if you wanted. Uh, so it's all, all the knowledge is really transferable. But in textiles, uh, a textile, for anyone who doesn't know, is a fabric and a material it in in the in the world of design when you're saying material you mean like a hard surface so wood marble granite um, concrete those kinds of things are what we consider materials and then you know whatever you're going to use for your curtains in to upholster something is going to be your textile and you learn um there's a lot of laws associated with what you can use for certain things. So if you're gonna, if you're someone who's going to go into residential design, it's pretty lax. You can, you know, use denim and use it to upholster your walls. If you want to upholster walls, you could do whatever you want to do. <laughs> but um, denim is gonna have different fire codes than um, a different uh, another material. So if you're going to 
use denim to oppose to the walls of a hotel, that's probably not allowed because it's going to have all these, um, it's like alphabet soup acronyms about that explain to you how that, what the burn rate of that fabric is. So one example they gave us in that class that the, when you're going into a hotel, if there was ever a fire in a hotel, the safest place to be in a hotel during the time of a fire is in the bathroom because there should be nothing flammable in a bathroom. And I was like, oh, I never thought of that. But when you, if you think about it, there isn't nothing that's really flammable. Maybe the um, shower curtain, but even those have um, rules about what materials you pick and what the burn rate is, meaning how fast that material would burn if there was a fire and how much smoke it would create if there was. So these laws are really, really strict and super necessary because we learned about different fires that had happened in history and how these before these were even laws about the different materials that you use, people were just dying almost needlessly because no one was thinking about what would happen in case of an emergency. Um, so like I said, you're learning about you're learning about materials, so woods, hardwood, softwoods, you're learning about marble and granite and things like Corian and things I'd never heard of, um, and also all your different fabrics, you know, silk and cotton and linen and why they are all so different and, you know, one's absorbent, one's not, that kind of thing. So I also took sketching and ideation. Sketching and ideation was um, the kind of part two of perspective drawing. So uh, perspective drawing, um, was us drawing interior spaces. And when you're, and we just did that with regular um, pencil or pen, so it was all black and white, no color. And in sketching and ideation, you're learning how to um, render materials. So by render, I mean um, you're learning how to make it look like it's, like something is wood or marble or how, or if there's like a sky. Um, outside the glass and you can see that in your in your drawing you learn how to make a table look like it's glass using markers and color pencils and it's just how to how to move color on the page to make it more real and to bring the photo to life to give um, more life to the idea that's in your head to showcase to your client and that class was really fun but super expensive you have been warned the markers are like $200 the color pencils are like 80 bucks our teacher was like do not show up in here with some Crayola because that is not gonna cut it <laughs> and we could not because it, he he was right Crayola was not gonna cut it and the last class that I took for the fourth quarter was lighting design so lighting design was very interesting because we don't think about light I think in this way and as designers, it was important for us, to, as um, perspective designers, it was important for us to learn, um, you know, what kind of light fixtures you want in your space. Not in the sense of, oh, how pretty this is, if it's decorative, if it's a chandelier, if it's crystal, if it's that, but you literally learn about different sized light bulbs different watts and kelvins, like what that means, um, what, uh, how they're going to make different um, fabrics and materials look. If you have something at a certain kelvin um, and you shine the paint and there's blue paint in the room, it's going to, the paint is going to look different than if you have a different kind of light in the room. So that was a way I'd never thought about it before, but we also learned about the psychology of light and uh, how light makes us feel. It can make us feel happy or scared or sad. You know, uh, we learned that things are sparkly. That kind of, if a light is sparkly, it makes us uh, feel happy. Like think of blinking Christmas lights and it kind of makes us smile a little bit. If you um, are in a place that's like dimly lit, like think about dark alleys in the movie. Um, and, and it makes you kind of scared, right? Because there's not good lighting, so you don't feel safe. Or um, just learning that lighting really affects or really makes a space a lot of the times. So if you think about a bank or a nightclub, a bank has totally different lighting than a nightclub, but say if you were out of the club and they had the exact same lighting as a bank, it wouldn't feel like a club anymore because that place being dark and having all those strobe lights and lasers is what makes it feel that fun, kind of sexy vibe. And if they had that at a bank, you wouldn't bank there because that would just be sketchy. That would be really shady. I would not <laughs> go to that bank. Uh, but in that class, you also you design a light fixture. You do plans, like you do denote, you know, where each light is going to go. Am I going to put a sconce here? Am I going to put a um, 
um, a hanging fixture here, directional light, up light, what's task light, ambient light, and you're learning about all these words, what they mean, and um, how you incorporate them into your design and how to just how to just keep all that in mind as you're planning out something for a client. That's my video. I hope you guys learned something today. I hope this was super helpful for you. If you have other videos that you want me to do, like what you do, like what you would take as a second year student, then just let me know, comment down below. And if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe or follow me on social media. Um, all that information is gonna be linked down below and just let me know what you guys want to see. Thank you. Bye guys.